Joel, good morning. Hey, guys. It's good to be with you. Hey, Joel, I got a couple things for you. One, um, you know, a lot of people are saying, okay, now he's got the contract. Um, we might not see him get to that peak that he does. Tell me about New York and why it holds players accountable. Because I think it make, brings the best out of you. Because they are going to boo you, they're going to stay on you, and I think they're going to get a lot out of these years. It won't be, hey, I, I'm, I'm vacationing now, I did what I need to do. You know, Harold, I don't think it's just New York. Uh, I wouldn't say that I got to know Juan Soto great, but I feel like I got to know him a little bit. And I think Juan Soto wants to be an historically great player. And I think that the New York market will push him. I think he's aware of he's in a class through age 25 with people like Ted Williams and Ty Cobb and Eddie Matthews and the other players who are great young, Alex Rodriguez. So I think... He knows where he wants to arc. You talked about, like, I think it was Matt, he said during the life of this contract, he'll probably get to 500 homers, maybe 600. I think he is a motivated player to try to be an historically great player. So, so take me through, before we dive into to moving it forward with other stuff, I'm going to stay on Soto, last question. So you're, 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 you're chasing this stuff down. Everybody's trying to, to, to let us know what's going on. Uh, take us a little bit behind the scenes. We've been hearing a lot of ping-ponging back and forth. What, what, were, what was Joel Sherman going through? Well, first of all, I'm blessed. I have John Heyman as a teammate here and at the New York Post. So I know that I'm armed with a guy who could follow this in real time. He worked so hard on this. I wish people would see just how many texts and calls John makes to try to stay on top of things. And I kept, I, I wrote a story earlier in the week, Harold, and I kind of felt this way the whole way. Every executive I talked to essentially said, Steve Cohn is not going to lose. Like that, if this comes down to he wants to go for where the, la you know, the best contract is. And by the way, I don't say that as a pejorative. Soto did his six years. He's a free agent. He's allowed to prioritize whatever he wants that ultimately Cohn would get it. It very much reminded me, remember when he bought the team, he's sitting there, Josh Harris and David Blitzer, the guys who own the 76ers and the Devils and uh, the Commanders now in the NFL, and David Blitzer ultimately went on to the Guardians. They had bids in for the Mets. Alex Rodriguez and Jennifer Lopez had bids in. Cohn was sitting there and said, just let me know what the number is because he was going to beat the number. This is a guy who buys art. There's no like wins above replacement for art. It's I, I want it <laughs> for what it means to me, the power, the status, the joy. I think you have to think in this case, this is a rare piece of art. There is not gonna be anybody this young, this good, who's a free agent for a long time. Maybe not until Gunnar Henderson four years from now. So like either you buy this piece of art now or you've got to wait a long time. And I just think that Steve Cohn was going to wait in the end and say, what is the number? And I wouldn't ignore $75 million signing bonus to somebody who lives in a state of Florida where the signing bonus is, I think, attached to that has no state tax. I know we're saying like 765 million, but that's worth a little more than maybe, uh, you know, if you're not willing to match that as a signing bonus, for example. So I just, I, I just think that if this came down to dollars, Steve Cohn wasn't gonna lose and we just have to get used to this. You know, George Steinbrenner, competed in New York against the Wilpons. This was not, the Wilpons would not have had the stomach for this. I don't even know if they would have gone in. They would have tapped out at some point. This is a new world. Uh, Hal Steinbrenner has got to deal with the Guggenheim partners with the Dodgers and, the, and Steve Cohn in New York with the Mets. It's the super heavyweight division and it's not a one team division anymore. Boy, that's great. Uh, that's great stuff. Great alliterations there. I, I want to ask you now what's next for the Yankees because that seems to be one of the big questions now that the dust is kind of settling on this uh, record breaking contract. Everybody's talking about a Brian Cashman plan B, how the Yankees were prepared for this happening all along even though they did put their best foot forward. What does it look like for you? Well, just in a macro way, Matt, I, 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 I would remind everybody, I'm old enough to remember when Alex Rodriguez signed in this hotel 25 years ago. He left the Seattle Mariners in 2000. He was a 25-year-old free agent represented by Scott Boris. The next year, the Seattle Mariners won 116 games. 
Bryce Harper was a 25-year-old free agent who left the 2018 Nationals. The 2019 Nationals, with Juan Soto, won the World Series mm. the next year. Mm -hmm. Right? Juan, Juan Soto was a San Diego Padre in 2023. They didn't make the playoffs. This year, they might have been the second team and best team in baseball without Juan Soto. The Yankees wanted Juan Soto. It is an easier answer in 2025 with Juan Soto to put together a team. But there is a tomorrow. I think what the Yankees have to guard against, if I'm going to give some historic perspective again, is when Shohei Otani told the Yankees he wasn't even among, they weren't going to be among the finalists. They pivoted hard and quick and acquired Giancarlo Stanton. And I know people have fresh in their head how great Stanton was in the postseason. But I think the Yankees probably have regret about doing that because of what Stanton means, locking up DH, being very right-handed, being non-athletic. I do think they need to be careful here. And the idea is to put together as good a baseball team moving forward. And that might not fulfill their fans' desire for stars, but the Yankees failed a lot during the regular season as they got to the playoffs and ultimately in the World Series because they had a lot of technical uh, problems as a baseball team. I would think about someone like Christian Walker, who's a very good first baseman. I would think about somebody like Cody Bellinger, who I think helps them wherever they need, need. first base, center field, left field. I would think, I'm going to throw a name out there, I am a huge Carlos Correa fan. If the Twins are trying to get out of that money, would you rather have Carlos Correa at four, year, four years at about $120 million, or maybe Alex Bregman at eight to 200 I know that Correa's body might be a minefield, but he's such a good baseball player, I would take a risk if the Twins are trying to get out of that money. I, if I'm the Yankees, I'm thinking about making the team as long with as many good players as possible. There is no other Juan Soto in this marketplace. So the idea is just get good and remember what the, 20, the 2001 Mariners looked like winning 116 games, what the 2019 Nationals looked like winning the World Series, and what the 2024 Padres looked like. There is a tomorrow, but the, tomorrow can't be a bad decision for somebody like Jacob. Kobe Ellsbury, where when Robinson Cano left the Yankees, they pivoted into Ellsbury McCann. Those were not good decisions. Now is the moment where the Yankees have to make good decisions about good baseball players. Woo, Joel. That's, that's good coming, stuff, Joel. Coming in hot, man. I got, coming I, in. I, I had written down. Oh, go ahead. You got something to sound no, I had. I had a. Oh, uh, yeah. oh right here. Bam. That's how you that's do it. That's how you do it. That's how you do a take on something like this. Yeah, I, I, I had. I was. I already written that, wrote, wrote down. Give me some suggestions. But you went all the way through it. It was fantastic. I have last thing for you. Pete Alonzo. All the Met fans want to know what happens with him, and I want to know, is he in the eyes of the Yankees? You know, I like Pete Alonso. Pete Alonso does the most valuable thing in the sport. He could hit a three-run homer. But the problem is he exacerbates a Yankee problem. Again, going to Stanton. They're, it's right-handed. It's not athletic. It's not very, I actually think Pete's a better defensive first baseman than his reputation. Having said that, he's not a good defensive first baseman, just better than his reputation. But I think the Yankees have to get better as a baseball team. I think Pete is going to probably do fine in this marketplace because there's obviously, as we've seen up to this point, not just with, with Soto, but everyone seems to be getting more, this is familiar, right? Everyone seems to be getting more than we expected. And that Soto has to be part of some team's plan B, C, et cetera. And he is a unique power hitter in the just below Aaron Judge category. Great Good stuff, stuff Joel. Man. Great perspective on this huge story this morning. We appreciate the time. I know we're going to tap into you uh, very often over the next couple of days. And we appreciate you being with us on a Monday. Thanks, guys.